Welcome to CC Rock. I am Metal Matt, and we are at the show of the year. That is right. CC Rock show of the year, that is. We are at the Shoreline Amphitheater, where tonight is going to be Halford, Maiden, and Queensryche all in the same bill. Now, we already talked to Queensryche twice in the last year, so we're not going to be talking to them. But we will have an interview with Rob Halford's band and members of Iron Maiden. So sit back and enjoy this ultimate edition of CC Rock. The video production of CC Rock is made possible in part by a generous donation from O'Carney's Funhouse in Wall Street. Located next to ATT Broadband Channel 6, O'Carney's Funhouse has pool, video games, shuffleboard, karaoke, and dancing every Tuesday through Saturday night. Metal Man of CC Rock thanks O'Carney's Funhouse for keeping CC Rock alive in Contra Costa Rica. Well, we finally made it! Lost on the seas of life! Sailing in the sea of uncertainty! Where we met this gentleman off the new album. So called the Ghost of the Navigator! Let me see your hands, San Jose! CC Rock, and like I said, this is a very special, very special time. We have Dave Murray and Adrian Smith, two of the very older members of Iron Maiden. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're doing great, thanks. Yeah, excellent. I hate to say older members, but you guys are. I mean, we're all, you know, I don't know, older is the word for it, but, you know, when I was like back in high school, one of the first times I saw you guys, the Number of the Beast tour with the Scorpions back in the Open Coliseum, it was a great show. I mean, that was in the very earlier days, I guess you could say, of, you know, that was your first time with Maiden, wasn't it? What year was that? <laughs> Number the beast. <laughs> yeah. No, that was my actually my second tour, I think. That was your second tour, so you were actually on the Killers tour. Oh yeah, well Killers is one of my favorite albums, I'll tell you. That album is probably like I said, I love a lot of all the Bruce's stuff, but Killers was my first album to listen to of Maiden. Maybe that's why it's still my favorite. Why did I and mean, this is really going back and I know I never really got the straight answer from anybody. Why did Paul Diano ever get kicked out or left the band what, what is the deal on that I guess you still won't get you still won't get a straight answer <laughs> no I mean it was he'd done a couple of albums a couple of tours and in fact he the tour in the schedule we were, we were touring like you know 11 months of the year and it was really it was wearing him down I think it was physically you know he was uh, it was getting harder for him so it's like a mutual agreement really there no no you know bad feelings yeah. we wished him all the best and it's still continuous he's still playing now well, you know, he just planned a tour of the states, and he had a, he got a little run of the law of some sort. I don't know exactly the story on it, but he was supposed to play, you know, Oregon and California, and then all of a sudden some, I don't know, dispute with the law, and he's back in England still. So, uh, like I said, I guess it's better to have Bruce because he's here and he has no problems with the law. <laughs> so far, no. so far. Well, you know, Bruce came on in the band. I mean, you guys, in a sense, this is a reunion per se. I don't know if you want to call it reunions, the word for it, but you know, Brave New World, a great new album. The first album with Bruce, you guys produced it together. How was the production how was the chemistry when you guys get back together after this long time well actually we went to Portugal for a few months and, and basically we had our own little you know apartments so and then we'll just meet 
every day and then all the, the you know the, the ideas started to flow in for the material for the new album so everyone was kind of pitching in various odds and ends and bits and pieces so we were actually really collectively living together normally we'd be uh, you know we'd record in England so that everyone would go home and meet up so we actually you know we'd see each other down a pub in the Basically, evening we've been living you know. together for the past uh, almost two years yeah <laughs> it's been going well absolutely well, we're still friends <laughs> yeah so it's nice to see the fact that I mean, you can get back together I mean everybody all the fans of course you know Blaze was cool I mean he had his time and he did some stuff there but you can't compete with Bruce I'm sorry <laughs> well, I know they're big shoes to fill I mean and also you know Bruce I mean coming in you know with the lyrics and the passion and enthusiasm and I think you know a lot of people identify and made him because he was in the band for a long period of time you know the same with Adrian so I mean I think it's you know Come, you know, getting you know the band back together in this format. You know, you got the best. Start fielding your best, you know, baseball team or whatever, best oh, yeah. soccer team. Yeah, all stars. Fielding our best, the best band, and, and creatively, everyone's just getting and it, and it shows. I think. From, well, you from got uh, you got five songwriters in the band now, oh, yeah. so uh, you got a lot of ideas. Nico doesn't write. Um, he does a bit, but not for Maiden really. Ooh. And so you got five songwriters. You are going to get some friction. Not everyone can get their ideas on, but I think that's what makes a good band. You've got to have that competition. Like you said, it's like a soccer team. If everyone is sure of their place, it's, it's, you get complacent, and you can't get complacent. So now there's like an edge to the band again. But you know, I got to talk about this three guitar attack. I mean, how do you guys do? What do you guys do? Rochambeau to decide who's going to do the solo or what? <laughs> we cast ourselves the three amigos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's only two of us at the moment, but. Uh, but yeah, we, I mean, it was pretty, you know, we get on really well. There was no real friction as far as that goes. There's, there's you know, there's everyone, uh, you know, can throw in their, their little ideas. So hence in the songs, you find little guitar melodies that are weaving in and out of the songs. And, and most of the songs, there's a few solos or whatever. So everyone gets a, ch a chance to actually to express themselves. There's nobody's frustrating this band, you know. And I think, yeah, we never, I, as far as solos things. I think, um, I think coming into this with three guitar players, I think if we, you know, if we tried to outdo each other, and uh, it wouldn't work. I think when we went into it, we knew it was going to be a team effort. We'd have to. We knew there was no, um, there wasn't any previous uh, ground rules because no one's really done it. So you know, it could have gone horribly wrong. But like Dave says, I think as people we get on really well, and we. We try and work as a team, you know. And we all got yeah. different guitar styles anyway. You know? Well, it's been beautiful chemistry. I mean, I remember one of my favorite shows I ever saw was Peace of Mind tour with you guys, Saxon, which is actually one of my top five bands, also along with you guys, and Fast Away. And uh, it was amazing that that album was one of the most complex albums, I must say. It seems like at least, at least at the stage when I was listening to you back then. Of course, I was just a high school kid, you know. <laughs> Thanks, but, but amazing lights. You've always had creative, theatrical ideas, very, very vivid. I think it's, it's great part of your show exactly who does all this and why why the the big push on the theatrical side i think we've always that from the from day one actually even when we were playing pubs we used to have like a little kabuki mask behind a drummer at the end of the show the dry ass would come out and fake blood and then the, the singer way back then used to have like a saber that used to draw across his mouth and blood you know so there's <laughs> there used to like fake blood so there's always a little bit of that behind anyway so we just kind of developed the whole thing and as each tour got bigger so did the production and I think someone like Somewhere in Time was like massive oh, and um, Power Slave. Um, you know, this, you know, the Brave New World tour, this is a pretty mega production we're bringing out at the moment. Can't wait so to see it. We've always tried to do that. I think so, so you come and see a show visually, you've got this and then you've got the music. So it's stimulating all the senses, you know, you can actually watch it or listen. And there's always, I mean, we've got pyros, we've got lights that are moving around, we've got eddies coming out, you know, we've got wicker women, we've got virgins, we've, got, we've got everything. Well, the virgins, those are hard to find, aren't they? Uh, <laughs> technically, they're not virgins. <laughs> we had a problem when we come to the United States finding virgins, but uh, <laughs> you've got to have a show, you know, you got to, especially if you're playing in larger places, um, you've got to come over larger than life, you've got to give people a show. <laughs>
a stage with Blaze Bailey, which was kind of a little smaller theatrical type of setup. I mean, he was drawing all right, but let's face it, you know, Bruce is back, things are going full speed. I heard this big rock in Rio. You guys are going to be the headliner, rock in Rio. 250,000 people hopefully will be out there. What is it like, I mean, playing in front of that many people? I mean, this is like, you know, what, probably almost 20,000 people here tonight, but 250,000. It can be overwhelming. I mean, I, I remember when we played Rock in Rio in, in the 80s, uh, we were, Queen were on the bill, White Snake, ourselves. And, and yeah, and it was, we actually, Nick and I actually climbed up the uh, lighting uh, uh, trust, up this ladder, to try and get, you know, that real, uh, see this, this sea of people out there, but you still couldn't see at the back. Wow. So it's kind of, you know, it, it's overwhelming. But once you get out there, that energy coming towards the stage, you just, you feed, you know, you feed off of that and you get, it's a great high, you know, so um, the reaction down in South America is wonderful anyway, but that amount of people, it's in, it's incredible, you know, so are we gonna the thongs? We're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, uh, the thongs <laughs> for days. But well, actually, we're gonna, oh, yeah. we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> document, <laughs> we're gonna document this. this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just before the, the Rio Carnival is gonna be happening. So, oh, yeah. but we're, we're gonna document, we're gonna, we're probably yeah. gonna do it. Film it. Of this, oh, we're yeah. probably gonna record this. Uh, and to you know to keep this and, and we'll probably release it next year you know so that's that's the plan anyway so you want to capture this you know well, well final part here i mean you're playing with rob halford rob halford is the metal god i mean i bruce is he's up there but let's face it rob was the first guy who came out he did all the stuff in the very beginning how is it turning with rob do you guys hang out a little bit and talk or what is it like oh yeah i mean the fact the friendship between the three bands is great in fact i mean going back to like we played golf with Queens right a few days ago, and then and backstage you're always chatting. We, you know, in, we go in the hotel, you know, in the bar, having a few drinks together. Still party like you used to? Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> no, like we used to, but uh, we still like to have a few still beers. A lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Lots but, of women, lots of beer. <laughs> we get on really well together, and there's like you know, lots of uh, you know, we have a lot of fun together. You know, yeah. I think I think there's a mutual respect between the three bands. You know, where we all respect each other. In this case. Well, I can't wait to see you on stage. I know that you know, this is, there's been two tours in a row that had some problems with you know Blaze's throat and of course you slipped in LA which I, you really hurt my feelings <laughs> you're gonna make it up tonight right my finger actually hurt more than your feelings <laughs> I guarantee you that <laughs> right, have a great time on stage tonight thank you very much right, cheers thank you I know just put <laughs> Oh, man, it's fault. <laughs> it's his fault. Oh, no. It's his fault. Let's go.
The video production of CC Rock is made possible in part by a generous donation from O'Carney's Funhouse in Wall Street. Located next to ATT Broadband Channel 6, O'Carney's Funhouse has pool, video games, shuffleboard, karaoke, and dancing every Tuesday through Saturday night. Metal Man of CC Rock thanks O'Carney's Funhouse for keeping CC Rock alive in Contra Costa County. It's now time for the CC Rock Review. The only place to find out where the best hard rock CDs are being released. First up, we have Ingve Malmsteen's Rising Force with War to End All Wars. Ingve Malmsteen is back, the legendary Swedish guitarist with singer Mark Bowles in this great Spitfire release. Bad Reputation, Masquerade, and The Wizard are standouts on the disc. And I'll tell you, this Swedish guitar wizard it's got flying fingers that you just gotta listen to. It. War to end all wars gets eight CCs on the rockometer. Well, believe it or not, Paul Rogers is back with Electric. That's right, the legendary Bad Company vocalist has now come out with a new disc on CMC International, which is now Sanctuary. Hey, Paul Rogers is hot. I mean, he has some great songs back with Bad Company, but this new one, Electric has a little bit of that Bad Company sound, yet a lot of new direction, which is great for a vocalist who's been around for a long time. He's got a new edge to it, a little bluesy, a little bit of hard rock sound. Definitely check out Electric. Paul Rogers Electric gets nine CCs on the rock album. Check this one out. Next is one of my favorite bands from the 70s and 80s and 90s, because they'll be coming soon if we had a place in the barrier for them to play at is Thin Lizzy with One Night Only featuring Scott Gorham and John Sykes. This is a great disc. It was produced back in Europe, a live disc, with a lot of the classic tracks from the, you know, the day when Phil Lynott was around. Of course, Phil Lynott has passed away. We all know that by now, I hope. If you don't, it's news. Phil Lynott has passed away. A great singer, a great bass player. But John Sykes, the guitarist who used to play with Whitesnake, and of course Thin Lizzy towards the end of the years with Phil Lynott, is taking his place, and this sounds really good. I mean, you've got Bad Reputation, Sun Goes Down, I mean, Cold Sweat, a lot of great songs, and a great sounding live disc. Thin Lizzy's One Night Only gets eight CCs on the Rock Omni. Next is a new band, a band you've probably never even heard of, but you're gonna be hearing lots about them soon. They come in that same mold of Deep Purple, Dream Theater. This is Spock's Beard with disc number five. A great release from Metal Blade Records, Neil Morse, a good vocalist, I'll tell you. He's got the sound of Billy Joel. He has some real talented lyrics. I mean, definitely a progressive rock band. And I'll tell you what, on the Hammond organ, you got Ryo Okamoto. This guy has got some fingers that make me think about the days of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. I'll tell you. Great sounding disc. Spock's beard. Get eight CCs on the rock on him. Next, another favorite of Metal Matt, Dio, with the very beast of Dio. A release from Rhino Records, The Very Beast of Dio, is basically a collection of all the main tracks and the A-sides and the B-side singles. I mean, you have Stand Up and Shout, Sacred Heart, Mystery, We Rock, Lock Up the Wolves, a great album. It has some, you know, Vivian Campbell stuff in there. You got some Craig Goldie in there. It's a great sounding album if you like all the hits from Dio, which like I said, it's hard not to. The Very Beast of Dio gets seven CCs on the rock album. Now this band you've seen lots of on CC Rock, Dawkins with Live From The Sun. That's right, Live From The Sun is another live disc, just like Thin Lizzy. This one is from the Sun Theater in Anaheim, a beautiful venue which people in the Bay Area should really, really be crying about because we don't have a venue like this, folks. <laughs> oh man, when the edge went away, it wasn't even the Sun Theater in a sense, but it was the next best thing we had to the Sun Theater. This is a beautiful facility, great sound. If you listen to this disc, Dock and Life in the Sun, you will tell what a great facility and great sounding venue this place is. If you ever get down to Anaheim, check out the Sun Theater. Dock and Life in the Sun gets eight CCs on the Rockometer. Another favorite of Metal Matt is Udo with Holy. That's right, the former Accept singer is now on his own. He's been out there for about, I don't know, eight years on his own now. And this new disc, Holy, is hot. He's recently just finished up touring with Saxon. He played with Raven a little while back. But Holy is a good album. Raiders of Beyond, a very standout song. I mean, they should use that for the beginning of some Raider games. 
Shout It Out, Back Off, and then a really kind of different song from Cut Me Out. That is a really different song. It almost sounds like a Billy Squire song, believe it or not, the actual rhythm of it. But Udo put his own special touch on the end of it. So, Udo's Holy gets nine CCs in the rock on it. Definitely check this one out. Another re-release by Raven, definitely their peak album, is Wiped Out. Wiped Out, of course, has things classic line of Mark Gallagher, Rob Hunter, John Gallagher. I mean, these guys were a trio of power sports rock that when I was in high school, hey, they blew me away. Wiped Out has songs like Live at the Inferno, Star Wars, Hold Back the Fire. Definitely, this is Raven at their peak. 10 CCs on the Rockometer. That wraps up this month's CC Rock Review. Keep rocking, Darius.